Upgrading our solar on the boat 120. We show you how we mounted our charge regulators up out the way. I've bonded that big piece of marine ploy. We move our Bosch 160 panels and we reveal what the fruits were. They are gorgeous. They look like they're from another planet. <laughs> And we go into a bit more depth on our solar and why we fitted one set of panels in parallel and one set in series. Sorry, 205 watts each. Mono crystalline. Some of our deliveries have come, I'll just uh, run you through them. Let's start here. This is our Orion Victron Energy um, TR Smart. This is a 12 volt to 12 volt isolated charger so this is the battery to battery charger so the input there will come from our one of our agms and the output will go to lithium that can be set by um bluetooth connection on the phone then we have our two bus bars so that we can so that we can keep our cables the right length from the lithium so all the cables have to be the same length. BMV 712. This is our Smart Victron Energy uh, battery monitoring system. That's Bluetooth as well. This one can monitor lithium, our old one can't. Then we've got two uh, Smart Solar Controllers. Um, this one is the old one, which I was using on the on the panels on the Bosch panels before this one is a new one and I've just labeled them up so that uh, I can identify which one is which and as I said before I'm using two separate on the panels rather than one and the reason I'm doing that is that if I have a panel failure or one of these fails I'm still able to charge my lithium from the other from the other circuit so a few more bits to come yet we've got our main fuses to come which will go in line with the bus bar and then I can start stripping things out. An immediate job is to take a piece of timber and epoxy that in below this combing where these controls will be dry up out the way inside the lazarette. Um, there won't be any issues with get them getting knocked or bashed or whatever. So I'm just gonna find a piece of ply. The piece that I've got is too small. So I need to find another piece and I think I've got some in the lazarette which will do. So that's the next job. So tucked in the lazarette, I've bonded that big piece of marine ploy onto the inside combing. So our winches are up there above. And it's been bonded with thickened epoxy and the two controllers are now in position. And uh, I won't start wiring them yet because I want to start from the panels down. And we'll just put the cables in the bottom here, make some nice tidy joints, what have you. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Wheels in motion 
As usual, I'd done a 3D model just to make sure that the panels would fit and that alignment was okay. It all worked out. All of the stainless has now been polished, taken off and polished. There's a couple of little stains we can't get out here. I'll have another go at them tomorrow. But the old panels, the two 160s, have now been flipped 90 degrees. Uh, and they're perpendicular to the frame. There's four inches of clearance on the back of the boom. And the next two are ready to go up. We've got to get some brackets. Um, we tried to get them today, but they weren't in stock, which is unfortunate. So when they come back in stock in a couple of days, we'll be able to put them in. But no strong winds forecast, so the centre bolts here are done up. They won't go anywhere. So that's stage one of part one. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm just thinking about how I'm going to wire these. And I think what I'll do is I'll put two in parallel and two in series. So what does parallel and series mean? Well, series circuit is made by connecting the end of one device to the beginning of another. In parallel circuits, the same terminals of both devices are connected together. Now if you followed our Boat Electrical Made Easy series, which I would advise you to do, you'll know that there's a difference between parallel circuits and series circuits in the amount of resistance that components give. Let's try and explain that mathematically. So this video isn't an electrical tutorial. We've done those before, as I said, go and look at our series on Boat Electrical Made Easy. But it's all about knowing the value of R and how to calculate it. And you can see from the equations, it's different with series and parallel circuits. But just to put it in very basic terms, when current flows in a series circuit, it has to go through all of the components and all of their resistance. Whereas in a parallel circuit, it has many paths it can take through each individual component and therefore the resistance is lower. So let's get back to the schematic drawing for our solar. You'll note here that the two 205 panels are being fitted in series. The end of one panel is being fitted to the beginning of the other. This means their theoretical output is much higher in voltage. The original 160 watt panels are being connected in parallel. This means that their theoretical output voltage is lower. However, there are some advantages to that. So let's do a bit of a recap and explain what those advantages or disadvantages can be. In a parallel circuit, the current has more paths to flow, so the resistance is lower. In a series circuit, the current has one path through all the components, so the resistance is higher. Let's look at our two 160 watt panels. They give out 21 volts each. We run these in parallel, it gives us 21 volts to the MPPT regulator. The regulator converts this to the charging voltage at a higher amperage. Now let's look at our two 205 watt panels, 23 volts each. We run these in series, which gives us 46 volts to the MPPT charge regulator. The regulator converts this into the charging voltage at a higher amperage. The two center panels, the two 160s, are more likely to be shaded by the mast or boom. They will work less efficiency at the lower voltage in parallel. But if one is partially shaded, there is less overall effect. The outer panels, the two 205s, are less likely to be in shadow from the mast or boom. They will work more efficiently in series at a higher voltage, but if one is partially shaded, there is more overall effect. Splitting the solar like this gives us two systems that are independent, and if one should fail in any way, we're still able to charge our batteries. Solar panels in series will give you a higher voltage allowing your MPPT charger to work more efficiently. 
however solar panels in parallel will give you a higher amperage and this may be an advantage if there is shading over the panels right there we go MPTs are now live from the solar put these conduits in the sticky pads I've got to hold the conduits up have lost their stick for some reason so I can't get these conduits to go up I'm gonna to have to go and find some new ones from somewhere they are about 10 years old so I guess the goo on them's done but once these are all pushed up tight it will protect the the cables they don't really need the conduit it just makes it tidier um, and the cables are all double insulated so but yeah there we are just got to connect the other end now so we're getting power from the solar panels but we haven't powered up the uh, charge controllers yet that's why it says it's on float because it thinks there's uh, batteries are charged but that's that end let's get out of here show you the other end so the charge regulators all in conduits all up managed to get some of these pads to stick to hold all the conduits up out of the way just to stop them getting tangled on stuff but it'll protect the cables and uh, green light flashing we're on float we're putting power in the system let's show you the other end so at this end we've got all our conduits in and tied back nicely got to straighten up the uh, the horn there and put our lifter back on but that's it job done now I'm probably going to put an aluminium rivet in the old holes the old mounting holes for the center panels but here's those plastic clips that we used to fix the outer edges and this isolates the stainless steel from the aluminium although I have used the stainless steel screw into the frame with a little bit of silicone grease on it to uh, stop it corroding and now there's just the battery monitor so let's get on to that BMV 712 is pretty easy to fit it comes in two parts there's the monitor or screen which you program and then at the other end there is a shunt and that goes on the negative side of your battery and that tells the monitor how much current is being used or of course put back in there's only a couple of connections let's uh, show you what they are so the negative line of the house batteries has the shunt in it that's fairly easy to do just two bolted connections to the terminals and the other place that it connects is on the positive line of the house batteries the BMV can actually monitor two sets it can monitor your engine battery as well I haven't connected that up yet but I will do later the monitor and the shunt are connected by a cat5 cable it's not shown in this schematic but that's simply a plug-in at each end really easy to do the old shunt is out we've just marked it up so that if I use it somewhere else or sell it on or give it away or whatever um, we know which way it goes round the new shunt is in the Victron one that's plugged in that's the old battery monitor which is now dead and the new battery monitor is going to go in here and I've got to make a panel up which is similar to the other panel um, A it will hide the holes that we've got from the previous stuff we've had there make it look a bit better and I've got to bring the new battery monitor which is temporarily hanging here and is yet to be programmed um, with this cat5 cable around the back and through and up to the uh, the other monitor so that's the solar basically done apart from the panel work and program in that so far um, it's working extremely well so once I've made up the panel and fitted the display in that will be the solar part of this project completed and it went very well and parts were easy to get here in Turkey and everything was easy to connect now I'd always recommend that you do yourself a schematic drawing like this it helps you to plan out where the connections have got to be made it doesn't necessarily show where components are in relation to one another for example our solar chargers are next to one another 
not at the top and bottom of the boat as shown on the schematic but that's the point it allows you to plan things out now boat electrical doesn't need to be complicated in fact the simpler the better and that's why we did this series of videos and put them in a playlist boat electrical made easy it starts with the very basics and by the time you get to the end you'll be drawing your own circuit diagrams and understanding how all your stuff works and how to fix it pop over and take a look at it there's a link in the description and now the bit you've all been waiting for what a lovely pair oh, dragon fruit well they're not pears they're dragon fruit they're yeah dragon fruit. and they are gorgeous aren't yeah, they, they are. So stick them in the fridge cut them in half and then eat them they are gorgeous they look like they're from another planet <laughs> but they are absolutely lovely we make these videos for you guys for your entertainment for your interests so that hopefully you don't make the mistakes that we've made and believe me we've made a few There's a couple of things you can do to help us out if you've been entertained. You can give us a thumbs up. You can tell us in the comments. We love reading your comments. You can subscribe. You could even buy us a beer. Or you could become a Patreon. For less than the cost of a decent coffee every month, you could get all the extras that Patreons get. And they do get a lot. Why not pop over to Patreon and take a look? We'd love to have you on the crew. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, sail safe. <laughs>